Hello everybody and welcome to the Winsock non-blocking networking tutorial number four. In this tutorial we are going to go over how to handle partial sends and receives. If you remember in the blocking series we did this in tutorial seven. But let's go ahead and before we do anything, the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and make a connection class. And I'm just going to call it TCP connection. And I'm going to have it set up like this, I guess. So, in a TCP connection class, there's just a basic constructor, which we're not really using right now. Um, we have a place to hold our socket. And then for our partial sending and receiving, we're going to have these variables. So we have bytes sent, which is going to be obviously the number of bytes that have been sent for our current packet, the outgoing packet length, and then for receiving, we're going to have the bytes received, which same deal, but the bytes that we've received, and incoming packet length. So the first thing I want to do is I want to do a find and replace uh, and so that we're using the TCP connection instead of the socket. So our vector, I'm going to change this to TCP connection. And then to do a quick find and replace, I'm going to do control H. I'm going to replace connections I with uh, TCP connection, oh, sorry, that's not right, with connections I dot socket. Hit replace all, yes, okay. So you see what that did was it replaced everywhere that we had connections I, like for example, down here where we were doing our uh, FD sets. They replaced it with the socket object, which is exactly what we want. So now let's go down to where we are actually, let's see, the server is currently receiving the data. It's not sending any data. So we'll go down here where we have our read FD set. And the first thing we need to change is how we are receiving. So right now we're always receiving data into the beginning of buffer and we're just receiving four bytes. We're going to change this so that we're going to receive data at buffer plus the offset of how many bytes we've received. So at the beginning bytes received will be zero. So we're just going to read it directly into buffer. And then let's say we just read one byte when we still need to read three more. Well, now bytes received will be one. So instead of starting at buffer, we'll start at buffer plus one byte just to fill in those other three bytes. But th this should be review. If this is confusing, take a look at tutorial seven on the blocking series. It goes a little more in depth. Um, the number of bytes we're going to receive is just going to be total bytes incoming packet length minus uh, how many bytes we've already received. Next, uh, one thing I want to change is right here, where we are printing out the buffer. Um, the problem with this is, let's say that we receive one byte. Well, we're going to print out the buffer even though we've only received one byte. We haven't received all the bytes that go into that buffer, so we might be printing out the wrong data. Even though, in our, in our scenario, we wouldn't see it because the client's always sending the same four bytes, but you know, in a real in a real server client, that's not going to be set up like this. So the first thing we will want to do is we will check if return val is greater than zero. And what we are going to do is for bytes received that connection, we're going to add return val. So we're just adding the number of bytes that we've received. After that, we are going to check if our bytes received is same to that packet size. All right, and if that matches, then we are going to print out our buffer, and then we are going to reset bytes received to zero so we can start receiving the next packet. One more thing I need to go ahead and do is for incoming packet length. Uh, I'm just going to set this right here. And what I'm doing is 
I'm just setting it to four because that's the size of our buffer, and we're just going to set it here for now just to demonstrate how this is going to work. And I'm going to go ahead and also add some comments to this. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out and see what happens. All right, and it's working just as we would expect. So now let's change it so that the client does the same thing, as in it'll handle partial sends and receives. Going to go ahead and copy our TCP connection class. Open up the client. And we will just put our class at the beginning here. Going to change pending connections and active connections to use the TCP connection class. Going to have to do a find and replace. And replace pending connections i with pending connections i socket. And do the same thing with active connections. Okay, so now let's go down to where we are sending the data. Okay. We need to store the return value from send. And we're going to say if at least one byte was sent, then what we are going to do is we are going to increment byte sent by return value. Then we're going to check if our byte sent is equal to the packet length that we're sending. And then we are going to uh, reset the byte sent to zero. Now we also need to change how send is being called and we need to set the outgoing packet length. So first let's set that outgoing packet length. Set it to four. And here we need to offset our buffer by uh, how many bytes we've received. And then instead of four, we need to pass in the actual size that we are trying to receive. So incoming packet length minus bytes received. And let's see, looks like that's all for receiving. Or I mean, sorry, that's all for send. Nope, for receiving. I said it right the first time. Um, I got a little confused here. What did I do? Looks like I went a little bit too far up. Whoopsie. All right, this should be incoming packet length. This is for receiving. And here I used incoming advice received. I think I scrolled too far up. Okay, here we go. This is what I meant to go to. Uh, whenever we are sending, it's going to be buffer plus uh, active connections byte sent. And instead of four, it's going to be active connections uh, outgoing packet length minus byte sent. So what we're saying is we're going to send to this socket we're going to start sending, uh, we're, we're going to send the data that's located at the buffer pointer plus the offset of whatever our byte sent is. So if we haven't sent any bytes, this is going to be buffer. And the whole byte sent offset is only really applicable for when we do a partial send and we need to send the rest of the data. Here we are saying the number of bytes we're going to send, I think it keeps keeps going to the left. The number of bytes we're going to send is going to be the total packet length minus however many bytes we have sent. Now, before we uh, send anything 
we need to set that outgoing packet length. And I'm just going to default it to four. Let's go back up to device received. I think I might have messed something up here. Yeah. So for bytes received, sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit. I just scrolled up too early and kind of messed me up. We need to check if bytes were actually received when we try to receive. Okay, so if at least one byte was received, we are going to handle it like this. Um, increment our bytes received by however many bytes we've received. We're going to check if bytes received is equal to the incoming packet length. And if it is, we're going to reset bytes received back to zero and then print out the message that was received. Now, one more thing. Oh, nice. Okay, we went ahead and set the incoming packet length to four. So I believe this should be ready. Let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to run the server. I'm going to run the client. Yep, we are still getting our spam messages. I'm going to close that client and close the server. So that's all that we are going to cover code wise. Now I just want to go over something that we're going to be doing a bit different on the non-blocking side. So as you can see, partial sends and receives are, are kind of a bit more work because we have to go through and check, oh, you know, every single iteration, oh, did we fully receive that last packet? And really it's, it's not a big deal if we were just receiving four byte packets the whole time, but we know that we're not just going to be receiving four byte packets. We're going to be receiving packets of all types of sizes. So we'd have to have this logic for each different, you know, packet that we're sending. And it would just be uh, kind of a big mess. So here's how we're going to handle receiving packets differently in the non-blocking server than we did in the blocking. So in the old blocking server, what we did was, well, with at least for sending data, let's look at that because it's the same idea. We would send the packet type and then we would send the packet data. So for example, if we were sending a chat message, we would send the chat message packet type and then we would send the string length of the message and then we would send the actual message buffer. Now, Here's the difference. In the non-blocking, we're first going to send the packet length, and then we're going to send the packet type plus the data on the end. So the main difference of this is we are going to be sending all the data that we were sending before, but before we send that data, we're going to send the whole buffer length. And that way, what we can do is we can have two modes. We can have like a receive packet size mode and then actual receive packet mode. And then after we receive that packet, we can process it. And it will, we will have a lot less code, code on the receiving side. It'll be easier to maintain this way. So that's probably what we're going to start going over in the next tutorial. Probably going to bring over that packet class that we had made in the blocking series and use something like that. So until next tutorial, once again, thanks everybody for watching, and that's all we're going to cover.